All right, I think we should be live. Hey everyone, thank you for joining. We're gonna go ahead and give just a few minutes for folks to join. There's, there's already a good amount of, of people in this webinar, but we'll give it a few minutes. So thanks for hanging tight with us. Hey, Mitch, are you still able to see my camera? Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, we'll get this kicked off at 103. Give it one more minute here. Okay, cool. We can get started. Um, welcome again. I'm, I'm in the attendee list seeing some familiar names, so it's great to, to see that everyone's taking some time to join today's webinar. Um, we're very excited to walk through this and uh, you know dive into all things forecasting, budgeting, targeting, goal tracking, um, which is really the agenda for today's call. So before we dive into that, um, I'll do some introductions just in case there's some newer folks who haven't attended previous webinars. My name is Nick Appenzeller. I'm our VP of Client Success here at Glue. And on the, uh, the call with us today as well is Mitch Harchis, who's one of our senior BI analysts and developers. So he brings a ton of you know value experience uh, working with customers, both internally and externally. Um, so yeah, excited to be here with you guys today and uh, looking forward to walking through this information. So um, if you just really quick before we do get into the agenda for today, this session will be recorded and available after the fact. Um, hopefully everyone's able to stay for the duration of the call. We should be running about probably 30 to 45 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, um, but if not, rest assured it will be recorded for you guys. All right, so for today's agenda, we're gonna be talking about a topic that comes up quite a bit from our clients, which is you know, forecasting, budgeting, goal data, targeting. Um, there's, you know, all of our clients have really individual, unique ways of reporting against their forecast. Um, we're gonna be covering the main areas of focus for today which are different ways that you can leverage Glue Plus with Looker to generate reporting specific to forecasting and goals, et cetera. The first item that we're going to cover is going to be a review of setting benchmarks and goals within the native visualizations inside of Looker. Um, this is gonna be great for, you know, if you have just a singular manual number that you wanna input and track against that, um, this is going to be a great option there. We have a ton of customers that leverage this because it's really fast and it really doesn't require um, too much technical work or anything along those lines. Secondly, we're going to be reviewing our custom table upload process, but more so specific to forecasting. Um, we have, again, a lot of customers that leverage our CTU process to get data that doesn't exist in one of their integrations into the data warehouse so that they have that data available within Looker to report on against their actual figures. So we've got some good examples to walk through there. Um, if, if you haven't, if you're not familiar with our custom table upload process, we'll do a brief overview of that just to kind of set the stage. And then Mitch is gonna share screen and walk through some actual examples of, of what that looks like. 
And lastly, we're going to talk about a really cool feature that Looker has enabled um, in the platform. It is their ARIMA forecasting uh, functionality. And basically what that's going to do is it's going to leverage this um, very technical autoregressive model and apply it to your data. So it's going to project your data out based on your historical actuals. Um, so some really cool stuff there. We'll be walking through how to leverage that, the different variables and inputs that you can adjust to kind of manipulate um, and get that as accurate as possible. So things like seasonality, um, interval timing, all of those two things. Before we get into the fun stuff, um, not that this isn't fun, but I'm going to pop up a couple of poll questions and I'll give you guys about a minute to answer these. Um, we're really curious for the folks that are on today's session. Um, you know, if you're familiar with forecasting, if you're leveraging forecasting, et cetera. So without further ado, I'm going to push up a poll now. Um, just asking if you guys are currently, if you currently track forecasting, goal data, budget data, um, via some sort of CSV or Excel file. Um, yeah, I, I've heard from a lot of customers that this type of data isn't traditionally captured within a data source. We have quite a few doing this, but would love to hear from you guys if you are capturing and storing that data in something like a CSV or an Excel file. Lindy says, yes, that's awesome to hear. And also, if you're newer, there's a, a Q&A box. Feel free to pepper us with questions along the way. We love to keep these sessions engaging um, and address anything you know, that might need to be addressed. Thanks for that, Lindy. OK, it's been about a minute. Let's check out the results. Okay, we've got about 60% that say yes, they are tracking this type of data in a CSV or Excel. About 34% that are saying no, but we're interested in that. And then a handful, about 8% that are saying no, and we're, we're not planning to do so. So very interesting. Um, appreciate everyone who engaged with that poll. That's fantastic. Hopefully for the folks that um, are already doing this or are interested in starting to do this, what we walk through today should be a really good kind of walk through of what that will enable you to do. All right, next one that we've got is for the folks that are, um, what are you using this data for? So it could be demand planning, goal tracking, budgeting, curious, you know, kind of where you focus your efforts as far as this type of data is concerned. Got a couple more coming in, so I'm just going to give it a few more seconds, and then we'll push the results live here. I'm glad I waited because I just saw a big jump in uh, in the results. It's still going. I'll give it a few more. Ben says he has more than one use. That's awesome to hear. I think as we go through this, um, Ben, today, you'll you'll kind of hopefully be able to see that really a lot of the methods that we're going to walk through can be applied to, you know, really anything. So excited to dive into that. All right, let's push these live. 22% demand planning, the large majority, monthly, weekly goal tracking. We see that a ton. Um, that's not necessarily a surprise, but excited to, to dive into that. And then about 11% budgeting. Um, I'm sure there's some overlap with you guys. Um, Jonathan, thanks for that question. We'll, I'll circle back to that in just one second. 
Okay, and then um, one last poll that we want to do. We'll finish off with a few towards the end of the call. Um, the last poll is what are the most, most important metrics for you to forecast? I know there's so many different metrics out there. Within this multiple choice list, we tried to really just kind of boil it down to the you know, high level types of data. Um, so if you could generally let us know, that would be great. If it truly is other, that's totally fine too. We'll give that a few minutes and then we'll push the results here. While we wait, Let's circle back to Jonathan's question. He says, make this a ranked question, doing all of it. Also define budgeting, either forecast to budget or marketing budgeting. Yeah, that's that's great input, Jonathan. Appreciate that. Um, there's, you know, a lot of granularity that we could get into here. And, you know, appreciate you answering that poll. That's a good suggestion too, Jessica, of, of having an all option here. We'll make sure to, to uh, update that for the next set of polls that we have. All right, let's see how we're doing here. Wow. This one is shocking. Okay. I'll give it a couple more seconds and then I'm gonna push that live. All right, it's a resounding revenue and sales. Um, again, not shocked there. We see a lot of that. Um, that's great. Thank you guys for, uh, you know, for addressing those poll questions here. I'm just going to push back to the agenda. So let's start with, um, you know, an overview of how to set benchmarks and goals within the native visualizations that Looker offers. Again, this is going to be for the folks that maybe aren't tracking some of this data in something like an Excel sheet or a CSV, um, they simply wanna be able to put in an input or a goal number and then compare their actual data from their systems to that goal. Um, without further ado, Mitch, I will let you go ahead and share screen. Yeah. Um, and just let me know when we're good and we'll jump to the second item for today's agenda. Sounds good. Uh, Nick, can you let me know when you can see my screen? Are you able to see this, Nick? Yes, yeah, sorry, I was muted. Yes, we can okay. see your screen. And uh, folks on the line, if, if anyone's having any issues, just write in the Q&A, and I'll make sure to get those addressed. Perfect. Okay, cool. Thanks, Nick. Um, yeah, so what we are, or what I'm about to kind of show you guys is how we would do um, kind of benchmark reporting within Looker. So, you know, for this example, my idea was to take, you know, just some basic data of our order month and the number of orders um, that we have. My thought was to add in a benchmark number. Let's say, you know, my company wants to be, you know, averaging 750 orders a month. And I want to see, you know, comparatively in a visual how, you know, we can see that. So normally, you know, you would just open this up and you have, you know, just your orders for I did the last eight months. Um, but what we can do is for add calculation. You can create a column with just a number here. So I literally just have to type in 750 and we can call this order benchmark. Hit save. And that creates a new column here that we can then compare against our actual numbers. So when I open up the visualization, What we can now do is hold on for some reason that in for some reason that came through as a text. Interesting.
let's try to run out again. Um, anyway, so something else we can do here is once we have that benchmark in, what we can then do is look at our number of orders, go down to our calculations, and you know we have some pre-built calculations here we can do. So percent of column, percent of previous row is going to give us a comparative calculation between your number of orders actual versus your benchmark. So you can see here, um, you know, for February, we're at 49% of our goal, while, you know, our other months we did over 100, over 100, just about. So what we can do then is go to our y axis here, and we can move this to our um, other axis here. So you can kind of see a better how you're performing. Um, you know, comparatively to your goal. So you can see uh, first couple months, percentage wise, you're below and it looks like we did really well in um, October comparatively. So that is kind of the first way that we can do that. The second way um, that we can take a look at that is by doing big numbers and having kind of a comparison period type of um, plan here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the date fields and narrow this down a little bit, just say for the last three months, we're just gonna look at total number of orders. And no, it's not letting me, uh, let me try one thing. Okay, we'll worry about that later. So what we can now do is open up our visualization and we're gonna hide this and open up a single value and you know we can call this number of orders. So the next thing that we can do is if we wanna have a comparison line underneath it, we're going to do that same process, go to calculation and do percent change from previous row or percent of previous row. Um, either one, depending on you know how you want to look at the metric, we'll do percent change from previous row here. Uh, let's see. Uh, I guess I didn't like that. I didn't like me messing with that, so we'll put that back. Run that real quick. Okay. Oops, sorry. Pressing too many buttons. Um, Nick, are you noticing why that would be giving me zero dollars here or zero percent? I'm not exactly sure why. Yeah, if you did, you select um, percent change from previous row. Yeah. So I believe it's because there's only one row. So it's looking. Um, you know. Okay, I got you. I got you. One row in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so you could break that down by like date or something like that. Got it. So okay, so this is what we'll do instead of 
doing that, what we can do is add in month. We'll change this to two. And we'll do this um, a couple different ways. The first way is by using this, uh, this pre-made calculation from um, Looker. The second way is, uh, you know, we can do it through a add calculation piece. So now that that percent change is there, what we can do is we'll hide the rest of the values. And then if we go to edit and then comparison, hit show comparison, and it'll automatically pull in that next um, column here after the number of orders for the main piece of the KPI. And so now we have down here, um, we're at negative 51% change. Um, if we wanted to you know, rename the label, you can call this just percent change. Um, you know, if you wanted to do, you know, month over month, et cetera, you can change that. Um, so the other way I was going to show you is, um, well, that's row over row. So that's comparing number of orders month over month. What we can do is remove that, remove this, rerun just so we have a singular row here. And then you can hit add calculation and you can, um, you know, either do your, what do we call this number of orders? So we can type in number of orders and literally just subtract order benchmark. And we can call this, um, you know, plus or minus benchmark. And, you know, we can rename this and say, oh, go back to our comparison there. Um, okay, we're, you know, 1,003 over benchmark, et cetera. If we wanted to do it as a, you know, percent change, you just, you know, do the percent change calculation so number of orders minus order benchmark divided by number of orders to get that um benchmark change and this into a percent and now we're you know we're 57.2 percent over benchmark so that's how we can um, do comparison period kind of benchmark. It's all just based off of kind of, you know, if we wanted to change this to a thousand, we can, and, you know, you can change the benchmark pretty easily there. That will change the, um, you know, the calculation that we have built here in the benchmark percent change. And that's just kind of our, you know, simple uh, percent change calc there um okay cool nick was there any other things that you wanted me to hit on for uh for this section of the the webinar um were you going to hit on the radial gauge uh visual or is that something we, we maybe want to circle back to after we do both of the other bullet points here yeah we could we could do that real quick so if we click on the radial gauge Visual, this is something where we can, you know, kind of manually, again, input, um, I don't know why it's being all funky. So this is something, this is a visual where you can manually input um, your, like a target here. So if we go into radial gauge, open up the forecasting settings, go to target, and, you know, if we just want to type in target value override, what we can do is type in, let's say our value was 1500 that we wanted to see. 
Hit enter. And make sure we click override as our source. Um, let's do value and label. Target value override. I just want to acknowledge quickly Ben's question about having yeah. several benchmarks. I think, um, hey, Ben, really quick, the next uh, the next bullet point that we cover in the agenda, I think will address that really well. And yes, you, you can have several benchmarks. You basically want to, for this method that Mitch is showcasing right now, you'd essentially just want to have multiple columns within this data set one per each. And then instead of doing this radial format for the visual, you'd pick a, um, a table. So great question there. All right. Target value and label. Value, target value override. Not sure why that's not popping up for me, but yeah, Nick, why don't we go ahead and um, pop it over to you to do um, to talk through the CTU process, and then um, yeah. I can come back to this when we uh, do our third bullet point. That's perfect. Yeah, that's great. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do you want to stop sharing then, Mitch? I will yep. share my screen as we walk through the CTU document very quickly. Are you guys able to see what I'm sharing here? Um, I'm seeing a, a black box on my end here. Yeah, right, right now I'm just seeing uh, your video feed. OK. Um, well, let me just chat through it then really quick. I'm going to try one more time to see if this will enable itself. No, it doesn't look like it is. So let me just kind of talk through this at a high level. This next bullet point um, for the agenda that we're going to be walking through is related to custom table uploads and the concept of, you know, if you are managing a CSV file or an Excel file of your forecast data or goal data, you want to get that into the database side by side with all the, excuse me, all of the other native looker tables that we pull in. This is a great method to do so. Um, the process and what that looks like in order to get that file over to us is essentially you'll work with your account manager. You'll send them that Excel file or CSV file. They'll return to you the document, which I was trying to share earlier. Basically, it's just a very simple doc that outlines the formatting structure that we need the data in. So just some rules around, hey, a date needs to be formatted this way, a number needs to be formatted this way, so on and so forth. Um, and once we have the file solidified, we, our team, as in Glue, will take that file and load it into Amazon Redshift, which is your database. And then once that's in Redshift, we will we have an option of either you can leverage our team to update that file on a monthly basis. So let's say it's forecasting data each month. You need to update that with the next month's data. Um, you can leverage our team to do that. Alternatively, we can set you up so that you can update the data yourself, especially if that data needs to be updated at a frequency that's, let's say, biweekly, weekly, daily, something very frequent. We'll want to set you guys up with the ability to do that. So in the example that Mitch is going to share his screen and walk through, he's going to be showing you data that's inside of Looker 
that is not coming from one of our integrations, but rather coming from a custom table upload that someone's provided to us. Um, now, one thing to keep in mind here is that the example we show may not look anything like the file that you guys use internally today. And that's okay, because the beauty about the custom table upload is you can structure it any which way you'd like, so long as it gives you the ability to do the reporting you need to do. Um, and we're here to assist with that. We have a lot of experience um, formatting these files for people, you know, or helping to instruct them on how to format these um, in a way that's gonna allow them to achieve the reporting outcome that they're wanting to achieve. So Mitch, I'm gonna let you share again. Um, and we can walk through this custom table upload process and what that looks like from a reporting side in Looker. Awesome. Let me share. Okay, cool. Uh, Nick, can you see my screen? Uh, yes, I can. Okay. So going to show you a quick couple of examples of what a CTU looks like within Looker, and then I'll kind of show you a couple of screenshots of how we, um, you know, would use that forecasting data from the CTU to compare against um, actual data. So you'll notice this is a um, a test CTU that we have uploaded. A lot of our customers use a retail calendar, um, so. You know, a lot of times we will upload a C2 with that. So you'll notice in Looker, it populates just like a table on the left-hand side here. And you have the ability to choose, you know, all of your fields and your measures still the same. So when you upload that flat file as a CTU, um, you know, we do all the work behind the scenes to make sure that the look is the exact same when it comes to actually being able to see it within the BI tool here. So you'll notice, you know, we'll have the date field, um, you know, this is different months and, you know, year. So you're able to select all the fields, the measures, et cetera, um, you know, and then run this as a table, merge results to your actuals, et cetera. Um, this is another example uh, of a different one we uploaded. This is, you know, for example, having this table of forecasts broken down by, uh, I think this is like product category or something. So you can see all of our different product categories here. And for example, we brought in just a couple of columns here that have, you know, we're expecting 7,000 orders for January for um, this product area. Same thing with for February. Um, and then, you know, for example, if you had these product categories within your products table, you would be able to go up here to the right hit merge results and join that to compare against your actuals. So the next thing I wanna show you is kind of an example of what we um, you know, can do after merging results. So is, is that showing up, Nick? There we go, okay, cool. So yes, this is a post merge results so you can tell that we started by just taking a Shopify orders query, pulling order date, and we pulled our sum of revenue. And then what we did was pulled a forecast CTU that had just date and then two fields of our original plan and then a reforecast plan. So you can see here now we have all in one column, or I'm sorry, one table. We have our forecasting data, our reforecasting data, if you know, any changes were made, and then we have our actuals for that same date. We can pull that into the visualization above there. Um, and then you also have the ability under add calculation if you want to do any of those steps that we uh, mentioned previously about, you know, doing, you know, you could subtract some of revenue from plan to see, you know, plus or minus plan, you can do the percent change uh, using that add calculation uh, function as well. Um, cool. So coming back to, and then, so Nick, do we want to keep going on CTs or do you want me to kind of dive into the forecasting part? Yeah, I think timing wise, let's dive into the forecasting part. Um, guys, for anyone who's who's still with us on the call, there's a document that you'll see in the resources box in the webinar screen. Um, it points you to some of Google's documentation around 
the forecasting abilities inside of Looker. So it's going to give you a really good breakdown of the model that they're using, the visualizations that are supported, basically answer any question about what you can do with the functionality. I think, you know, for today's purpose, Mitch will highlight the main abilities and you'll be able to see clearly your actuals and forecast data. So um, Mitch, you can continue on. Okay, great. So uh, going back to this radio gauge um, real quick. So before we get into other types of forecasting from Looker, so we need to make sure that the target source is override. Then we go down to our target value override and we can type in, you know, our we wanted it to be 200. And so now you can see we have our benchmark line there. We can call this benchmark. And so that's kind of how that visual would look. So you have a lot of different options there for, you know, settings and, you know, making sure that that's visible and, you know, changing the colors and whatnot. So, okay. So the last example I wanted to show you was how to kind of create forecasting out after um, you know, pulling in some, let's say, basic revenue data. So let's just say that we pull in our order date and sum of revenue, and we're just looking at it by day. And normally you would just see, you know, your normal line data. So what we are able to do, as you can see here, we have, you know, our last 60 days up until today. And then what I've been able to do is add kind of a forecasting line here going out seven days so that's accomplished by going into our forecasting button here we just select our sum of revenue field as what we want to forecast and then we can just tell it how many days we want to forecast out so if we wanted to change this to 10 and type in 10 run that and it will forecast out uh you know a further amount of days and you can see um, in your table down below, values marked with an asterisk are forecasted. So it's telling you, you know, exactly what the actual number is that's being forecasted out. So um, you have the ability to do this, you know, with any of your measures. It doesn't have to be revenue. It can be orders. It can be number of customers. It can be, you know, your discounts. And you know, you can obviously do this over greater date ranges if you want to do like last 12 months and then forecast out, you know, the three months out. Um, you can definitely do that as well. You can, you know, turn on prediction intervals. You can, you know, turn on seasonality. Um, so there's also a lot of options there that, you know, don't have anything to do with having to upload a CTU or put in any benchmark. Uh, Looker kind of just already does it for you. So this prediction interval is pretty cool. If you, you know, click on any point there, you can see it tells you um, what interval it's expecting. And you can change, obviously, the percentage here um for the uh, prediction interval um so a lot of cool stuff there that that looker can you know manually do there for you um in terms of forecasting out data so yeah uh, yeah i think that was about it that i wanted to to show there on the forecasting piece nick yeah that, that was really helpful mitch and just for anyone who's interested in using that the forecasted option does, and you'll see this in the documentation listed as well, it does allow you to forecast data if you're using pivot tables or table calculations as well. So um, like Mitch mentioned, there's a lot of functionality and things that you can do here. Obviously, the data set we're looking at right now is, is a very uh, simple example, but you can get pretty advanced with this. Um, and it, you know, it's a great way if you haven't done any sort of forecasting before you know, the ARIMA or the autoregressive model that they're using um, is is common out there. So there's there's other people using this and it's a good starting place. So uh, appreciate you sharing that, Mitch. Was there yeah. anything else? I know you circled back to the radial gauge to show them how you can set that benchmark or that target. Yeah. Is there anything else that you wanna circle back to um, that we spoke about previously? I think we hit everything. Um... In terms of visuals that are available, um, you know there there are a lot of other visuals available in Looker that you know if you just do some 
exploration like i'm sure more have this you know the ability to forecast and target like this is you know a bar gauge so kind of the same thing if we go to target and override and you know type in a number here 100 um it's kind of i need to mess around with it more but you get the point there's a lot more visuals out there that looker has that you know do have the ability to um, to set targets and benchmarks without having to do anything in terms of the calculations so whatever visual you're using always make sure to check the forecast button that's there as well as uh, the edit button sometimes if there's targets to set um it's all pretty straightforward with you know entering uh your value override or you know if you wanted to select a different measure and have the target be you know the first or the second measure in your table there it can do that automatically for you as well um but yeah so that was about it for me yeah that's great um yeah i would say anything relating to this this forecast option within looker refer to that document it's going to list out all of the supported visualization types it's going to give you best practices for the prediction interval the seasonality um, variable that you have everything that every adjustment that you have is is very well described and outlined um, here for you guys so and of course reach out to your account manager if you have any questions on that as well thank you mitch um yeah i think what we'll do is i'll give just a couple minutes for any questions related to what we had just covered through our screen share and then if there's uh, no questions or we, we get those addressed, we'll jump into the last couple of polls here and then we'll get this wrapped up. So I'll give a few minutes for uh, any last minute questions that you guys might have here. Okay. Ben just asked that, can we create a calculation for forecasting? Say a client wants to forecast future, but up to, uh, but up. I'm not sure I understand um, your request fully, Ben. Can we create a calculation for forecasting? Say the client wants to forecast future. Ben, would you mind just um, maybe providing a little bit more detail? And if we can't address it on today's call, I know um, I reached out earlier too. We'll, we'll definitely get in touch with you to make sure we leave you in a good spot. Okay, we have, um, hey Mitch, are you still able to hear me? Yeah. Okay, perfect. We've got another one from Jonathan and he's asking if we have any future features um, integrating Google Sheets or other Looker instance tables, a data source versus a static custom table upload. It's a fantastic question. Um, it's something that our team is actively exploring uh, this year. We've had a lot of requests to integrate something like Google Sheets. We think it's a phenomenal idea. Um, we're just exploring the best methods in which we can do that to best support you guys. Um, Jonathan, we can connect after this call, but um, yes, to answer your question, it is something that we're exploring um, in great detail and hopefully will, will be something that we can provide to everyone here soon. Okay, Ben came back. The client would want to forecast revenue with additional 10% uh, send. So Ben, it sounds like it sounds like in your instance, the CTU method may be a good option because it'll give you the ability to dictate any you know additional percentages on top of your forecast that that you'd like to include. So just remember that that CSV file, you have full control as far as the data that ends up within that. Um, there might be some other ways within Looker to do what you're talking about. I think it, it might be helpful for you and I and, and your account manager to uh, to jump on a quick call. So 
feel free to connect afterwards and um, and we can have a, a quick breakout session. Thank you guys for those questions. Really appreciate that. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and push these final just two or three poll questions. Really, they're, they're for us to kind of make sure that the content that we're covering on these webinar sessions um, is, you know, valuable to, to you guys. Um, so let me go ahead and push this. Really, this is open forum uh, or free text. Is there a webinar topic you'd like to see us cover in more depth? I'm not going to present the results of this poll. So I'll give, you know, two or three minutes for you guys to type out a response. We, we want to make sure again that for future webinars, we're really having a chance to cover things that are important to you guys or really hot topics in the marketplace. So um, I will let you guys respond and then we'll move on to the last two. Give it one more minute in case anyone's still typing. Um, Jonathan, I just got your note. Not seeing any poll yet. Mitch, are you able to see the poll on uh, on your screen? Um, actually, no, I'm not. I click audience. It's just. Just showing a black screen and then kind of an inlay of your video screen. Okay. How about um, now? I just re-pushed it. Uh, looks like still the same. Interesting. Okay. Let's um let's jump past that one. Oh, Jonathan just said there it is. So it must have gotten. There must okay. have maybe just been a slight delay there. I'll give it a, a couple minutes here. Thank you, Jonathan. Okay. Hopefully everyone has uh, had a chance to submit those. I'll give it like 15 more seconds just for everyone to click enter um, with where they're at. If you haven't had a chance to finish, again, feel free to, to reach out after the fact. We would love to hear from you guys. Um, make sure that, you know, what we're talking about is valuable to you all. Um, okay. Next poll question. Hopefully everyone can see this. Just asking what part of the business that you specialize in, helpful for us to get an understanding of, you know, where everyone's responsibilities lie for, for a topic like this. See some flowing in, I'll give it 30 more seconds and then we'll go to the last one here and, and get this wrapped up. Uh, Jonathan, I, I apologize. I, I hope I didn't cut you off in writing your first response. Um, as I noted, if you wouldn't mind reaching out to your account manager again, I apologize. I didn't mean to rush, rush that with the delay that we had. Oh, 
Okay. Um, last one is, are you tracking towards the original goals you'd set out for glue? So we just want to get a pulse check from everyone who's joined today on if they feel like, you know, they're crushing their goals that they originally set out to achieve with glue. If they're in motion of doing that or in progress, they're trending in the right direction, or if you could use some help, um, you know, we're, we, we want to make sure we provide the best support we possibly can for everyone. Oh, Olivia, thank you for um, for replying to that question, this q and I'll give this last one um, a little bit longer. I seem to have cut some people off, so apologies there. Okay. It looks like most people have replied to the poll. Um, I'll give it just, just in case 30 more seconds and then we'll close things out. Oh, thank you, Jonathan, for, for sharing that. Yeah, great suggestions, Jonathan. That's super valuable for us, thank you. Okay, I think that wraps things up. Um, again, thank you guys all for taking the time today to join today's session on forecasting. Uh, we'll make sure the recording gets distributed to everybody so that you have this on hand if you need to refer back to it. If there's anything at all, even if it's unrelated to the topic for today that you want more information on or you need some assistance, um, reach out to myself, your account manager. We'll make sure to schedule some time with you and work through those items with you. So um, appreciate it very much. We're looking forward to hopefully seeing everyone that was on today's session in our future sessions and have a great rest of your day. Thank you guys.